Good afternoon, everybody. We are going to start this class. Um, we are going to start another topic. So for this session, we are going to be discussing on how to solve a linear set of equations. So there are different methods we are going to be considering. So this, uh, this topic on solving uh, linear equations or linear set of equations is going to be in three parts. So this is going to be the first uh, part. Then we'll have another one next week. Then we'll round up. It's going to be in three lectures. So we'll round up uh, it next two weeks. We're going to be discussing Gauss elimination and Gauss-Jordan method for solving linear system of equations. So given this set of equations, where this A and this B, they are the coefficient, and you want to solve for uh, x1, x2, x3 to xm, there are different methods that can be used. So we are going to, we are going to discuss five methods in this class. Uh, the graphical method, the Kramer's rule, elimination of unknowns, and the Gauss elimination method and Gauss Jordan method. So this class is just a refresher because I'm sure you have learned uh, it in your undergraduates, in your undergraduate. So it's just a, a refresher. So if you have, uh, I'm going to start with the graphical method. So if you have these two systems uh, of equations and they are both linear and you want to solve for x1 and x2, so the graphical approach is to make um, x2 or either of the unknowns the subject of formula. So you're going to make x2 the subject of formula for this first equation and you make x2 the subject of formula for the second equation. Then after that, you're going to draw the, you're going to draw the graph of both equations. Then where the equations, where the both of them meet, is going to give you x1 and x2. For instance, if you have these two sets of equations, and you want to use graphical method to solve for x1 and x2, they are going to make x2 the subject of formula using this equation to get this. Then you make x2 the subject of formula uh, using this equation, and you arrive at this. Then you're going to make a plot. So x is your independent variable, while x1 is your independent variable, while x2 is your dependent variable. In order to draw it, they're just going to use different values of x1. So I'm starting x1 from zero and I stopped at six. Then you're going to use this function here to, to plot x2. Then I'm going to use this equation here to plot, to plot the second x2. So from my graph, this is the first x2 as a function of x1. And this is the second x2 as a function of x1. So where the two lines meet is the solution to the linear equation. So the point here is where they meet. So when you take it down to the x1 axis is four, then when you take it to the x2 axis is three. So that means that x2 is equal to three, while x1 is equal to four. So we've been able to solve this equation using graphical approach then when you substitute the values you you get inside you arrive at 18 and 2 and this 18 and 2 is what is in the original question 18 and 2 just to confirm your answers so the graphical approach is quick and easy and very convenient but how about if we have three sets of equations so yeah we, we just have two sets of equations yeah x1 and x2. So if you have three sets of equations, that means that this is a two-dimensional plot, right? So if you have three sets of equations, 
you can plot it. That means it's going to be a three-dimensional plot. And you can use a tool like Excel or MATLAB to plot it, to plot three-dimensional uh, graphs. But how about if, if you have four, uh, four sets of equations, I, yes, it's not possible to use the graphical method. So the graphical method would break down if you go beyond three equations because there's no how you can plot a four, a, a four D plot. I don't think that's possible. So you have to uh, look for another alternative. So uh, given these sets of equations, so we have three and three sets of linear equations. In order to solve for the x, you can just arrange this equation in matrix form. So the a coefficient, since this is a three, it's three sets of equations, it's going to be a three by three matrix. Then the b coefficient is, um, is going to be a vector. So it's just going to be a one column vector. Then this, um, this matrix here, we can just call it A. This X here, we can call it X. Then this B uh, matrix, we can call it B. So to solve for X, we can just say the inverse of A multiplied by B. So we are going to be making, it's just, if you just use this or MATLAB, it's going to give you X directly. So we are going to uh, make use of MATLAB. Uh, in order to solve it using a, a software method. So it's MATLAB we're going to be basically making use of because MATLAB from its name, MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. So one very good feature of MATLAB is that it's, it's very good for solving matrix, uh, matrix. So anything in matrix form, it's very good and very easy and fast. So we're going to basically uh, making use of MATLAB as numerical tool for, for solving this linear set of equations. But all these methods, you should also be aware of them too, in order to uh, solve um, linear sets of equations. So we we made this, uh, we talked about the the graphical approach. So we are going to uh, talk about the Kramer's rule. So what the Kramer's rule says is that if since when given a set of equation, we can express it in matrix form. What the rule just says that you know you want to get x1, x2, and x3. So the rule says that to get x1, you get you find the determinant. You find the determinant of this matrix here. You find the determinant of this matrix, which is given by D. Then after this is the determinant of this matrix, then in your numerator, it's just going to be the, the original matrix. So for X1, in place of the first column, you're going to replace it with the B, uh, with the B vector. In order to get x2, in place of the second column, we replace it with the b vector. The others, the other columns will remain the same. Then to get x3, the determinant is at the denominator. Then your first column, your second column, um, like the original matrix, but the third column, because we want to get x3, so the third column is going to be replaced by the b vector. So we're going to use an example to really understand. So given this set of equations, and we want to use Kramer's rule to solve for x1, and x2, and x3. So the first thing is to express this in matrix form. So this uh, set of equations, so this is the matrix form here but it's a three by three matrix. So we are not considering the coefficients on the right hand side. Then to get the determinant of a three by three matrix, you are going to break it down into two by two. So you have 0 0.3 here, 0 0.3 here, then one, 1.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. You get the determinant of this, then it's plus minus plus. 
there's going, to, there's going to be a minus a then 0 0.5 1.9 0 0.1 0 0.5 then plus 1 0 0.5 1 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 so we um in when we did um modern control last semester we talked we used matrices a lot so uh, we just it's just a refresher so when you do this so the determinant of this is this here determinant of this is this here determinant of this is this here so when you calculate it is this is the answer you're going to get so you get your to get your x1 it's just the original matrix this is the original matrix but in place of the first column you're going to replace it with b then when you do the math you get your answer so in place of x2 uh, for to solve for x2 it's just this um matrix here but in place of the second column it's going to be the b and you would solve for it so you just find the determinant of the numerator, then you already know the denominator. Then for x3, you get the determinant. So you have x, uh, the first column and the second column is just the same thing you have here. But at the third column, you're going to replace it with b. Since you are solving for x3, then you get the, um, the answer. So this is using Kramer's rule to, to solve it. So one, um the the Kramer's rule is easy, but when you get to you want to solve four sets of linear equations and four sets of linear equations, that means that you need a four by four matrix. That means that your A matrix is going to be a four by four matrix. And you need to get the determinants of the four by four matrix. So from experience, you know that the um, it's not easy, it's not very easy to get the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix unless you're using a tool like MATLAB to solve it. So um, we need another method also. So that the Kramer's rule as, um, is impractical, especially when the number of equations increases. So another method is the elimination of unknowns. And the elimination of unknowns, it builds up from the other two methods. So if you have these two sets of equations and we want to solve for x1 and x2, so the first thing for elimination of unknowns, you're going to, so you have these two equations. So you multiply the, you multiply the first equation by a to one. Then you multiply the second equation by a one one. So when you do that, so yeah, we multiply this first equation by a to one. Then we multiply the second equation by a one one. Then after doing that, you just subtract the two from each other. So when you subtract these two equations, you're going to eliminate x1 because this and this are the same thing. So when you subtract, you are eliminating this, then it's just, this is what you're going to get. You can simply collect the x2 terms here and you're going to arrive at this formula. Then to get, to sub, uh, to get x1, you simply um, put in the value of x2 you got into the original equation x1 yeah so you just solve for your x2 so you arrive at this equation so if you look at the equations we got here and here you can see that if you want to use the Kramer's rule for the Kramer's rule uh, this is your a matrix then for your numerator in place of the first column, you are replacing it with the B matrix. Then also to solve for X2, you have the A matrix, the determinant of the A matrix. Then in place of the second column is B1. Then if you if you solve for this, you are going to arrive at this and at this. So it's, it's the same thing you are going to um, arrive at. 
either you use the elimination method or you use the um, farmer's rule. So he said, can you come again? I didn't get you. So which part, which part do you want me to come again? I admit I'm really rushing because I feel that this, um, this, um, this topic is, is just like a refresher. So number one, you, you would have done it previously in your, in your undergraduate. And secondly, you, secondly, we is, this is just matrix and we, we did a lot of matrix um, when we're doing modern control because we're in state space and we're working with matrices. So I don't want to, that's why I'm really rushing. So let me, um, let me just try to come again. So for the Kramer's method, um, for the Kramer's method, you're going to, you have your, you want to solve for X1, X2, and X3. Then for the denominator, you have the, um, for the denominator, uh, you have the determinant of the A matrix. So this is your A matrix here. So when you have these equations, you can just easily get your A matrix. If it's, a, if it's three sets of equations, you have three by three matrix. So this is your A matrix. So the determinant is just the determinant of this A matrix. Then to solve for X1, and this is your B matrix. So to solve for X1, you are still going to make use of the matrix, but in place of the first column, you replace it with the B matrix. Then to get your X2, you would, you would solve this equation yeah, the determinant is always the same thing. But in place of the second column, you're going to replace it with the B, the B vector. Then for X3 is, is the same A matrix, but instead of the elements you have in the last column, you're going to replace it with the B vector. So that's the Kramer's rule. Then for the elimination method, you're just simply eliminating the unknowns. So the first thing is that you multiply the first equation by A21. This A21, we got it from the second equation. So that's the first step. And the second step is that you multiply the second, uh, the second equation by A11, the A11 of which you got A. And after that, after doing this multiplication, so this equation three, we multiplied it by A, A21. So you can see A21 is just across all the, all the terms. And for the second one, you multiply each of the terms by A11. So you can see A11 across all the terms here. Then, uh, you subtract, you subtract this from this, and you are subtracting it because you want to eliminate the x1. Because if you look at this and this, they are the same thing. So when we subtract, that means that we are eliminating the x1 term. And when we do the subtraction, we are going to arrive at this. Then you make x2 the subject of formula because x2 is common to 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 both terms on the left hand side and you arrive at this equation. Then to get solve for x1, you just substitute this value, what you got here, into the first equation, into the original equation. So this is the first equation. So in place of x2, we will substitute that equation into this. Then we're going to collect like things and get x1 then we are going to arrive at this equation here. So I was saying that we're going to arrive at this equation. So I was saying that this elimination method is, um, is it follows directly from the Kramer's rule. Because if we were to use the Kramer's rule, remember that for the Kramer's rule, you want to solve for x1 and x2. The denominator is the, the determinant of the A matrix. So that's the denominator. But the numerator is also the A matrix, 
But to solve for x1, in place of the first column, we are putting the b, the b vector. Then for to solve for x2, in place of the second column, we are putting the b vector. So if you do the determinants, the determinants of these two by two matrix is b1 times a22 minus b2 times a12 divided by a11 times a22 minus a12 times a21 which is this so if you look at it so this is what we got for x1 then for x2 this is what we got so the emulation method is it follows directly from the farmer's rule so you can this was the equation this is a set of linear equations we used to solve the graphical method and using the elimination method or the Kramer's rule, we are at that four and three. And if you go back to the graphical method, it was also four and three we got for X1 and for X2. So the elimination method is, um, is okay, but for larger systems, especially for three by three, four by four, systems is going to be very difficult to it's going to be very very difficult to solve so we need a a better method so uh, we're going to look at the gauss elimination so the gauss elimination is actually um is the best approach when you want to solve a uh, linear set of equations that are greater than three greater or equal to three so it consists of two steps. The first step is the elimination of unknowns. Then the second step is back substitution. So for instance, if you are given this, uh, this set of equations and you want to use the Gauss elimination method to solve for the X, so the first step is that you're going to multiply the first equation by a21 divided by a11 so this is a21 here and this is a11 the reason why we are multiplying it like this uh, we are multiplying this first equation by this is that we want to eliminate in the second equation we want to eliminate x1 here so let me go back let me just go to this job summary so for the gauss elimination what we are doing is that, you know, we can represent the, the equation in matrix form, in this form. So in Gauss elimination, what we are doing is that we want to, you want to convert this matrix into an upper triangular matrix. So this is an upper triangular matrix. So what's an upper triangular matrix? An upper triangular matrix is, is simply a matrix that it that is of this form. So if you have this, if you have this matrix here, and you want to convert it to an upper triangular matrix, so here is going to be zero, and here is going to be zero, and here is zero. So this this matrix here is an upper triangular matrix. So this, can you see the? If you look at this diagonal here. Then look at this line and look at this line. It forms a triangle. So we call it an upper triangular matrix. So in Gauss elimination, all we are trying to do is that we are trying to convert this A matrix into an upper triangular matrix. And the way we do it is that we first of all eliminate X, uh, the X one that is A. Then we eliminate the X one that is here. Then we eliminate the X two that is here so that's the procedure so if it's a four by four it's also you are going to put it in form of a uh, an upper triangular matrix so the first step in gauss elimination is to eliminate this one is to turn this um coefficient here to zero after that you turn this coefficient to zero and after that you turn this coefficient to zero so once you you've converted the matrix which is originally like this into this form then you can now do back uh, substitution. So the conversion of this to zero, this to zero, this to zero is called forward elimination. 
y after that you do back substitution to get your x1 x2 and x3 so the way we convert i said that you need you need to convert the first step is that you need to you need to convert the term here to zero and the second step is that you need to convert this term to zero so in order to convert this one to zero the strategy is that you multiply the first equation this the first equation you are giving you multiply it by a21 divided by a11 so this is a21 here and this is a11 here so when we multiply the first equation by a21 divided by a11 we're going to arrive at this then after that you are going to subtract this from the second equation and this is the this is the second equation so what you've got here you're going to subtract this from the second equation then if you when you do the subtraction x1 is going to be eliminated because this is the this is the second equation here and this is the equation we arrived at after multiplying the first equation by this so if you do the subtraction this is a21 and x1 this is a21 and x1 so when you subtract definitely you are going to zero out the x1 term so after subtracting here we arrive at this so our x1 term is already zero so it's missing so you are going to move on to the next step and the next step is to zero out this one, is to zero out this term here. So the strategy you use to zero out this term is that you multiply the first equation by A31 divided by A11. So you multiply to zero out uh, the next term. So you multiply the first equation by A31 divided by A11. Then after doing that, you are going to subtract that multiplication from the third term. So when you do that, you are effectively zeroing out this term here. So after zeroing out this and this, the next step is to zero out the last zero. So remember that we want to convert uh, after zeroing out this and this, then if it's a three by three, the last step is to zero out this one, to convert this to zero. And to convert it to zero, we are going to make use of. So after the, um, after you zero out this, this, and this, then you want to zero out this one. So to zero out this one, you are going to multiply this equation by a three two divided by a two two. Then the result of the multiplication, you are going to subtract it from this then you're going to replace that equation with this so that means that you've zeroed out this so it's kind of my explanation is quite clumsy so i will just go straight to an example because using an example we are going to understand it better so i'll just go straight to an example and hopefully after that we'll understand it better so this, okay, so let's use Gauss elimination to solve these three equations. So we want to, like I told you, the strategy is to convert it into an upper triangular matrix. So we want to zero out this, we want to zero out this, I want to zero out this. So since it's a three by three, what we want to achieve is that we want to zero out this one. I want to zero out this, I want to zero out this. So I want to make all these three terms to, to become zero. So the first thing is that, so this first equation, we'll just leave it as it is because um, we don't, you don't need to zero out anything here. So it's these two equations that, is, that are going to change. So the first thing you're going to do is that you multiply the first equation by zero point one divided by three you multiply this first equation by 0 0.1 so a21 is 0 0.1 then a11 is three so you multiply this first equation by 0 0.1 divided by three we got 0 0.1 here 
and we got the three here. Then after that, what you, so this is the multiplication. What you, the result of that, you're going to subtract it from the second equation. So if you do this, remember that the, the main, our main goal is to zero out this. That's the reason why we are doing this. So if we do this, B is 0 0.1 x1. The result of this is going to give you 0 0.1 divided by 3 times 3 is 0 0.1 x1. So the result of this is that you've zeroed out this x1 and the result is this. So we are going to replace this equation by this. So we have achieved our first zero. So we want to zero out this. So in order to do that, what are we going to do? You are going to multiply this first step, this first equation by 0 0.3 divided by 3. So you are multiplying E1, this E1 equation by 0 0.3 divided by 3. Then after that, the, uh, the result of what, the result of the multiplication, you subtract it from the third equation. And if you do that, you're going to, this term here is going to disappear. This term is going to disappear. So we've, and this is our result. So if you look at the results, you've, uh, there's no longer x1. So we've zeroed it out. We've converted it to zero. So the next step is that we want to, so this is zero now, this is zero. Now I want to make this one zero. So in order to make, the last one zero. So th this is the equations we have now after doing these two steps. So this is the equation. So I told you that the first equation doesn't change. So x1 is zero now. X, uh, x1 here is zero as a result of all these two operations. So the final step, since it's a three by three equation, is that we want to zero out this. We want to make this one zero. After, after, after we do that, we know that we are done with the method. So in order to do that, this is our pivot equation. So you are going to, um, you are going to multiply this equation by minus 0 0.19 divided by 0 0.3, 0 7.0033. Then you multiply this equation by this. Then after that, the result of it, you're going to subtract from the third equation. So you're subtracting from the third equation because you want to, this is the equation we are interested in. I want to zero it out. So you will do this multiplication first, then you subtract it from this. So when we do the subtraction, we arrive at this. So finally, we have been able to achieve the upper triangular matrix. So this is zero, this is zero, and this is zero. That's the forward elimination method. Then the next step is the backward substitution. So for the backward substitution, you, you have this, this is your third equation. So you can simply make X3 the subject of formula here uh, using this equation and you get seven. So we know that X3 is seven. Then after that, we're going to, we already know X3. So we are going to put in X3 in place of X3. We are going to put in seven, the seven we got here. Then you solve for X2. We're going to get minus 2.5. Then to get X3, so we know X, uh, sorry, to get X1, we know X3 now and we know X2. So we're going to put in the result of X2 we got here and we'll put in the result of X2, uh, X3 we got here. They are going to make X1 the subject of formula. But if we do that, we are going to arrive at this. So we've gotten X1, X2, and X3 using the Gauss elimination method. And this is the X1 we got, this is the X2 we got, and this is the X3 we got. In order to confirm if you are actually correct, you're going to put in uh, these values inside. So you, you must arrive at this. Remember this is our B1, B2, and B3. So if you arrive at this, you are going to, you're going to be sure that you've your answers are correct. So there are some uh, pitfalls of how many decimal places should be used. Okay, that's a good question. So I would answer that. I would answer that uh, soon because I'm actually moving to that part. Okay. So 
the for this question this question says that we should use six significant figures during the competition so if you can observe um all my all the answers were in six significant figures so one two three four five six one two three four five six so it depends on the question but this particular question says that uh, your answer should be in six significant figures. That's why um, it's the the hand um, they are always in six significant figures. Well, I'm going to come back to that, and I would explain it fully. So there are some pitfalls or some downsides of the God's elimination method. So the first uh, pitfall is division by zero. So for instance, if you are given these three sets of equations and we are asked to solve it using God's elimination method. So the first thing you would observe that the first equation, this first equation is our pivot equation, and it doesn't have x, it doesn't have x1. So it's, it's effectively, this is like, this is like the complete equation since there is no uh, x1. So it's just like, this is what it is. So it means that since there is no x1, it means that your a1110 is zero. And remember that uh, the, the algorithm for the Gauss elimination method is that you want to remove this one. And in order to, you want to zero out this, this one. You want to zero out this one. I want to zero out this one. That's just the algorithm. So in order to do that, we're supposed to, multiply um we're supposed to multiply the first equation by this coefficient divided by this coefficient so the first thing we're supposed to do if we're to use god's elimination to solve this is that we are going to multiply the first equation by four divided by zero so here is Four divided by four divided by zero. So four divided by zero. It should be zero. Then this was this is what we are supposed to do. Then the result of the result of what we got here, we are going to subtract it from so. After doing this, you are going to subtract. Okay, you are going to subtract. So this is God's elimination method. So this is what you are supposed to do. So, but now there is a zero here because there is no x one term here. So if you if you do the four divided by zero if you use your calculator it's going to give you an error so how are you going to are you going to do that so that's one of the pitfalls divide their division by zero if your first question is zero it becomes impossible to use the gauss elimination method so join me in the next i'm going to stop